Hello everyone, I'm MJ Shaney, Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft on the Health and Life Sciences Emerging Opportunities team. I'm going to talk to you today about how you can create auto-regenerating API clients in .NET leveraging Swagger and NSWAG. By auto-regeneration, I'm talking about a code-generated HTTP client that will update to reflect any new changes to the API specification it is based on. Before we jump into the how, let's talk about the why. Generating your HTTP client has the code you need to write. No more writing the client-side counterpart to each endpoint. Auto-regeneration means you have less code you need to maintain. All changes you make in the API get taken care of in the client. Going through this process encourages better code comments, decorators, and documentation. Now, let's discuss how we would do this using an existing API project. I'll be demonstrating in a project my team has been working on called Hackathon Team Builder. The section of the project I'll be working in is specifically an API project over GitHub's APIs. First, you'll want to create documentation following the open API specification for your API using Swagger. Bear in mind, the better the documentation generated by Swagger, the better the generated code will be. So it behooves us to add XML documentation, turning it on in startup and adding code comments and to use Swagger method decorators as much as possible so that our specification will be informative. Once we have an informative specification generated by Swagger, we want to ensure the specification is created in our solution and updated after each build of our project. To do this, we can use the Swagger.net tool. First, if you don't have a tool manifest, you'll want to create one with the .NET new tool manifest command in your API project directory. Then you'll want to add the Swagger tool to your project using the .NET tool install swashbuckle.asbnetcore.cli command. Once you have the Swagger tool installed, you can tell your project to leverage it after each build in your csproj file using the following three lines of code. Once you've done that, you will see that after each build, there is a Swagger file generated with a JSON behind your Swagger page, and the JSON always reflects the latest changes in your API project. Now, we can leverage the specification we've created to generate an HTTP client with methods for our API's endpoint. I'll be doing this inside an Azure Function project, but you can use this in any kind of project that you want to connect to your API. The tool behind this code generation is called NSWAG. We can use it via Visual Studio's connected services section for our project. We'll point it to our Swagger JSON, give our class a name and namespace, then tell it to generate our code. After it's done, let's first take a look at our csproj file. We can see the tool has added some code to point to our specification reference. Now, anytime that specification changes, so will our generated client. However, it is worth noting the timing of these changes. When you build your solution, the build for these projects are in parallel, meaning that unless you build your solution twice over, you won't see the latest changes in your API in the client immediately. We can fix this by adding a project reference so that Visual Studios knows that we have a dependency here. Take note of the fact that since we don't actually need the resulting code from our API project in our package for the client project, we specify we don't need the DLLs included in this line inside our csproj reference. Now, if you build your solution without the Swagger JSON present, it will create the Swagger file, then generate the appropriate code based on, the, on that correctly. Whereas if you had done that before, it would error without the Swagger file due to the timing of the builds. You can also test this by making some small changes to your API and then inspecting the generated code. Let's take a look at our generated code anyway. In the event that we need to do some customization of the resulting code, we have some extensibility options offered to us as the class generated is partial, and it has on it stubs for various methods that you can use to override certain functionality. For instance, in our case, my colleague Phil Jersen and I needed to override the deserialization of specific GitHub properties. To do so, we provided our own custom JSON serializer. You can learn more about how to make your own custom serializer in the link in the description. That concludes our discussion of how to create auto-regenerating API clients using Swagger and NSWAG and .NET. For the same material covered in a text format with accompanying code snippets, you can find a link in the description to my blog post on this. Thanks for watching.